Hello and welcome to the show. Just give it a minute here. I'm going to wait for live viewers to come in so I don't have to repeat myself. This will be loaded to YouTube if that is where you're viewing it now. It was filmed live. I am James Cartmill reporting on Occupy SF TV in association with an independent citizen media. Wibley.com. Right now I am in Tacono, Colorado, about 20 miles east of Boulder. The title says there was a body found here recently. Just a second, I'm going to do something. Oops, that was the wrong one. In the chat room. Anyway, I'm sure that Global Rev will get that. And uh, once we have a couple more viewers in here, I will proceed with my report on the body that was found here, as well as the medical treatment of veterans, homeless veterans, uh, and uh, the less fortunate as it would be by the medical profession here in the locale area. Um, I was told before I went to this local medical facility that they treated white people like shit because they're all Latino or, or Mexican. And when I got there, I was not surprised to see the information was correct. And since I am in Colorado, I'm uh, loading up a, a nice bowl of medication. My back's been bothering me and I've been very busy. So now that we have some viewers, uh, basically it's a, a cut and dried case of, you know, the mower uh, for like along the highways and stuff, the brush mower was mowing behind uh, the south end of town here and near a, a new development uh, complex for houses, he uh, ran over a dead body. Uh, apparently through the social social media that I've been investigating around here in town the body uh, was a, there for a few days maybe and uh, they're investigating it however I did go up and look at the crime scene or, or where the body was found and the police tape had already been taken down and this was only a couple hours after the fact that the body was found um you know, I thought that they would at least leave the tape up for a while to keep people from going over there in case they, you know, wanted to go and look at the area again. But uh, it looked like their case was pretty cut and dry. They went in and came back out in less than two hours. Uh, corner took the body away. Now, this is a little town of maybe a couple thousand people. You know, we're a good 50 miles or more from Denver. Um, it's a quiet, rural, suburban community, you know, country redneck. And um, that kind of thing was really surprising to 
the locals here to find that they had a, a dead body found in their uh, south end of the town. It was literally only a few hundred feet from the local park. Um, we're going to skip on over to the issue of the medical attention. When uh, when I went to this uh, place called Salud, S-A-L-U-D, in uh, Frederick, Colorado, I was greeted uh, kind of snobbily uh, by the front desk agent who was very fancy with her nails. She had glitter on them and her nails matched the ring that she was wearing, which had different colored sparklies on it. And she just came, seemed kind of distant, you know, not really giving a shit that I was there in, in pain. Said that I, they didn't have a, you know, a room for me to get in, although I'd already called and set up an emergency appointment, which they can do if it's your first time. It's the only time they can do that, apparently. Um, she took me back to another lady who, as I approached the desk, I noticed she was on her cell phone texting. And I said, hello. There was no response. This woman also, Latino. Um, she finished doing what she was doing and then asked me what my name was. And after I told her, you know, what was the situation, she then proceeded to tell me there was there was no way I was going to get seen that day. It was, you know, later in the afternoon. So I told her that she would need to call an ambulance to get me out of there. In the meantime, she went up and talked to some people and came back and said that uh, you know they would they would see me real quick and uh, that they they did have room for me all of a sudden. So apparently, you know, calling an ambulance from that location was not an option that they were willing to go with. Um, my feet were extremely blistered. I did take pictures of them the other day, and they're feeling extremely better now. Thank God I got the uh, cream and the medication that I needed uh, to take care of it. It um, was a, an adventure getting to Salud and then from Salud to the Safeway several more blocks away, getting the medication and then getting back to where I was staying that night, which was another three miles away. Um, I didn't have enough money for my medication and a, and a lovely lady and her daughter uh, purchased it for me. and. Uh, Believe it or not, humanity is not quite dead. Um, and on a final note, we have a situation where here in Colorado, if you're getting on food stamps and you have an address, you're required to do um, some sort of community service or training or something to get those food stamps. Whereas if you are completely homeless, or you become completely homeless on the food stamps, you no longer have to participate in that program. Uh, the reason I know this information is because that is what happened to me. I did have a place to stay here. Um, lost the place to stay. And on last contact of the Colorado workforce and the human services, they told me that I don't have to participate in the program uh, that I'm exempt but I will still receive my food stamps for up to six months from the date that I applied which means I believe that I have like four months left if I'm if I'm not mistaken so uh, you know that that's one way to circumnavigate the system but it's not really circumnavigation when it's just the way that it's set up so you know why is it that if you have a, a home but no vehicle and no cell phone or an address to receive mail at that you're required to participate in a program where you have to travel um, and, and provide a service to get $200 worth of food stamps. You have to work 30 hours a month. Uh, it was either 30 or 32 hours a month to get food stamps. Um, that's that's slave labor at that rate you know I mean I know 200 bucks isn't a lot and then 30 hours isn't a lot but if you do the math on that um, you know that's not even that's not even 10 bucks an hour really um, and how do you survive on 200 bucks a month in food stamps anyway um, 
I've got some other things to do. That was a, a brief general report on the activities here recently. Um, I do have a, a lot of other things going on, information about uh, military activity in this area, training, uh, UFOs, that would be unidentified flying objects, uh, possible drone activity as well, um, and I, I do have a, a few people that have individually confirmed uh, what they identified as an unidentified flying object at low altitude within uh, a few hundred feet of them uh, moving silently and uh, these were independent reports they had not seen each other or talked to each other um, and it was always right down the main street area of this town or in a east-west fashion so, um, you know, it is what it is, or, or for whatever it is, it's, there is some uh, weird activity going on around here as far as either the military or, or extraterrestrials. Um, I find it fascinating, uh, several different stories from several different people saying the same thing, uh, describing the exact same object. So, you know... It, it's very compelling to me that, that there are other life forms out there, you know, and that maybe maybe we're more of a petri dish and an experiment than people really believe or would like to believe. So if um, If you'd like, if you'd like to help uh, see me continue reporting and spreading the information that I'm gathering, and I, I do have uh, tons of photos and videos of, of things that I've been doing, I just have had limited ability of uh, wireless or um, internet capability to uh, do live broadcasting and uh, writing stories and, and putting them up on the website. The website is Independent Citizen Media. Dot weebly com and you can follow me on Twitter Occupy One Liberty find me on Facebook James Cartmill or you can also follow uh, my Facebook page Occupy the Odyssey and please if you can't make a donation uh, there's links on just about every one of those uh, aforementioned links to contact me uh, if you can't make a donation please feel free to spread the donation link and let people know that um, this is how citizen journalism is done these days. We need your assistance to broadcast and uh, we thank you all, uh, all of those of you that have already made donations. We appreciate it and if you can make any more in the future that is also uh, greatly appreciated. So uh, Occupy One Liberty from Occupy San Francisco TV signing out. Peace, love and solidarity. It's good to see you back. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.